right. From Horning, come on up. All right. More it, good news out of Horning. Yeah, bright, Horning, a bright light in and of itself. But uh, tonight we're going to highlight a program inside of Horning called Habitat. I'm going to let Dee Garcia do a little uh, more detailed introduction on this. But I know that our, our audience and our team here tonight um, have, have pulled something off in the last six months, eight months, uh, that, is, that is pretty exciting. So we'll get a chance to hear tonight uh, about some of the thinking behind the program, the goals of the program, and current successes. So, Dee? Well, good evening, everyone. Um, we're really happy, once again, to be in front of you to highlight this fantastic program and your leadership in um, supporting us as we grow. As you know, we have a very long history of bilingual education in the school district of Waukesha, which is quite unique. It's around 40 years old at this point. And just in the past 18 months have we, for the first time, been able to expand our bilingual dual language program into the middle school grades or secondary for the first time. When the teachers got this opportunity, they worked for about a year to plan curriculum before they implemented it last year for sixth grade. And they found that over the course of their year, they had such robust and important, meaningful opportunities for relationship, for instruction, and for, um, I think, climate building with students, that they wanted to go further and do something that was a little bit different, that engaged students more um, authentically and allowed them to really discover for themselves what their pathways would be in developing their bilingualism, their biliteracy, and their aptitude in academics. So they came to myself and to Mark last spring with an innovative idea that Mark's leadership exploded and allowed to flourish. And that's where I'd like to leave it off. Um, I'd like to introduce Aaron Cameron, um, Johnny Flamboy, Maria Rivera. The students will introduce themselves in a moment, and Mr. Mark Wagner. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Happy to see you. Excited about what you're going to share, so take it away. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having us tonight. Uh, we're excited to be here. Um, I think the kids are kind of excited, but they're kind of shy. But uh, they're, they're going to uh, be explaining some things and, and also entertain your questions when we're finished with this presentation. So again, we appreciate the time and, and uh, being able to present some of this. We came before you uh, back in the beginning of the year to talk about what Habitat was going to be all about. And if you notice, at the, in the bottom of the corner of that first slide, it says, home of the 21st century hawk, two languages, one tree and really focuses on uh, the bilingual program and something that we uh, uh, are very proud of at this point. These three teachers came to me and came to Dee, as, as she had mentioned, and wanted to expand a dual language program and make it into something that was more personalized learning. Uh, you know about our flight academy at Horning, and uh, this, is, this is something that kind of started, uh, you know, with some of the same ideas as flight, but, but it is different. Um, but with the understanding that this was going to be a learning path uh, with, with choices and a personalized model, something that is, has not been in a dual language program per se. So um, I don't want to spend a lot of time with it, but if we go to the, the next slide, uh, Habitat is an acronym, and it's kind of a long acronym, but uh, that's all right. Uh, H stands for Habits of the Mind, A, Advancing, uh, B is Biliterate, I is Innovator, T is two, A is achieving, using, and T is 21st century skills. So that's how uh, Habitat came to be and what, we're pro what the program really entails with the keys, key words there, innovative or innovating and uh, advancing by, literates, by literacy. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to um, Erin right now, and she'll start with the presentation, and then we'll also bring the kids in as well. Thank you. I'm going to speak to the vision that you see up right now. And um, like everyone has said, we were very excited. We had flight as an example within our own building. So we were very excited about the personalized learning paths, but how is this going to look in a bilingual environment? And so I'm not going to um, bore you by reading our whole vision, but focus on the three pillars, which are personalized learning paths, which we've spoken to, by literacy, which we'll get into more detail, what by literacy truly means. And um, we also have our global competency and our um, content integration that go with those pillars. And we're, of course, trying to engage our students with this. Okay, so this is our first pillar. Um, being bilingual is what is often a term that's thrown around in the general public, meaning two languages. 
but really bilingual means being proficient in speaking and listening in Spanish and English. We wanted to go further. We want our students to be bicultural, <coughs> using those 21st century skills, that self-advocacy, and um, <clears throat> excuse me, and how they view their two languages and their two cultures. Also being biliterate, which actually means writing, reading, and being able to transfer those skills back and forth to advance their academic content. The kids have this slide, and we kind of just talked to them about being able to share what they've been doing with us. Content, language, and integration, obviously what that means, mixing that language and content together, and then the personalized learning piece, how we're beginning that path. Okay, so my name is Mariela, and um, our second pillar is content and language integration, which means obviously um, having our essential question for the week or for the unit that we have, and then which makes um, the students more into like thinking. And it the inquiry question or essential question also bases on our literacy, reading, and um, grammar. My name is Mariano, and the third pillar is person, personalized learning, which is utilization of student preference, voice, and choice in the learning of process. We can create our own projects. I did World <coughs> War One. How did I what? About what type of weapons they used? Oh, how it connected to Latin America? And kind of going off of what the students were saying as far as our curriculum, um, we base and lead our much of our instruction based on inquiry and essential questions based on a unit theme and then the students kind of go off of that theme and they then plan their um, own project based on their interests and also um, the essential question for that unit. Um, obviously using um, use of their Spanish and Eng English, um, some of it they transfer over from starting off in a Spanish unit and then they will eventually transfer some of that information into the English unit, which then they will um, complete their projects during that whole first round of the unit, starting in Spanish obviously and then ending in English. Um, and then obviously a lot of the instruction that we do then is getting them ready for their honors and AP um, Spanish placement classes in high school. Um, I, we had a video that showed an example of a student um, presenting her um, project to peers um, based on their voice and choice, again, with the whole personalized learning and their, what interested them, and they created an essential question, and she went and found research and put together a presentation and was presenting it to her peers, and the peers were able to then ask questions of her and further encourage her and also give her ideas as well to um, extend her project if she wanted to do so. Um, because we, because the video isn't working, I'm kind of punting here, but up in the upper corner, you can see the photo there, an example of another project that they did towards the beginning of the school year. And we are lucky to have a dual language site right across the parking lot at Banting Elementary School. 
So the kids were able to, and that's an example, how they went over and presented their findings and adapted their projects so the elementary students um, would be engaged by their presentation. So it was a really neat opportunity. Um, it was something, again, that they had actually originally started in English and then transferred, um, synthesized that information into Spanish for the kids and had a presentation, and it was, it was really neat to see. So that was a quick example. Oh. Okay. Here's the video. Oh, okay. My name is Sarah, and I'm learning how Mexico became a country. Hi, my name is Mariela, and I'm learning how Mexico became a country. Hi, my name is Jasmine, and I'm learning how Mexico became a country from my friend Gabby. My name is Gabby, and today I'm going to teach you um, how Mexico became a country. Okay, so um, the first president um, was Agustin de Entonces, Él tomó el cargo del poder ejecutivo, pero estaba ya el, el presidente anterior, que era Pedro Solestino Alegre, el anterior, pero él no fue presidente, nomás fue como pensando que era. Entonces, un año después se sancionó el acta constitutiva, entonces volvieron a poner el acta constitutiva, la constitución de 1820. En ese tiempo cuando uh, Guadalupe Victoria sí tuvo los votos, ¿verdad? Sí, ese, ese fue eh, el Las mujeres también, también podían votar o nomás podían ser. No estoy segura de esa pregunta. Se me hace, no estoy segura de esa pregunta. Que todavía no le gusta. Oh, entonces todavía no sé si podían que las mujeres tenían privilegio para votar. No, entonces no sé Bueno, no, no sé exactamente, pero porque era como un ejército, eran como muchos grupos, no estoy segura, pero la mayoría de los ejércitos que eran como más de 90 personas, que es lo que dice aquí, este, lo votaron como casi la mayoría de todas las personas de todos los ejércitos, que eran todos los grupos. Oh, yo pensé que las personas votaban, no lo sé. No, no, las personas, que son las personas que estaban unidas con un ejército. As you can see, well, first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Johnny Flamboy. I'm a, a dual language uh, teacher at Horning Habitat. The video that you, you just saw was ex a little presentation of what Gabby put together about 300 years of Mexico becoming a republic. And they chose that to show the different uh, standards that we have for this particular unit in our curriculum. If you can pass to the next slide. I can show you that we put together this program uh, a year ago. Well, dual language has been there for a couple, uh, several years in the district. And we know through the studies by Collier, and this is a, a picture that you can see in 1997 that shows the different uh, bilingual programs that existed in the country right now. And dual language thus far is the most comprehensive and attainable program that uh, exceeds uh, the expectations of uh, our students in, in the achievement, especially for our Latino students that don't, there's a, a gap in, in, um, in the high school drop. This actually gives them a, a good opportunity for them to excel and get ahead sometimes in, you know, in, in their academic life. As you can see, this is the 
uh, the curve, the northern curve of the entire country, by eight or ten great our students in dual language exceed uh, monolingual peers in a standardized test. That was one of the reasons we try to bring this program over to middle school and continue with this um, with uh, the help with uh, our bilingual department here in the school district of Waukesha. Can I just ask you, what does NCE stand for? Um, nor normal curve equivalent. Okay. So as you can see in 50, the, the red dot line is what um, monolingual, uh, uh, monolingual speakers of English actually achieve. That's the normal. And the other programs are the ones that have been implemented and their success uh, through time. Um, Wanda, can you? This is uh, actually the model that we're following right now. It's uh, learning for biliteracy, which we're trying to um, enhance their oracy and reading, writing, and meta language skills. They can transfer all the things that they learn in one language to the other one, especially grammar and reading strategies that they can be aware of their own language in order to transfer between both. It's just like the tip of the iceberg, what, what you can see when they speak. But you know, it goes much deeper when they know both languages and go back and forth. So we're being implementing not only in Habitat, but the entire dual language, this model. And it's, it's uh, actually working for us. The, the kids that we got this year are phenomenal and we're re really proud of them. Um, we created this as a blue ocean strategy. The, uh, what we wanted in our optimal learning spaces <coughs> is given the choice for them to explore and be comfortable in their own uh, classrooms. Instead of being just in rows like the inter, um, in, in the past, we're not in the industrialized area anymore. We wanted to uh, step away from that and give them, uh, a little more flexibility for them to explore their own capacities and feeling comfortable. So um, I actually put the, this picture together because we know that everybody's so saturated in one particular set of uh, thinking skills. We want to break through and go and explore something different uh, for them to you know, add a value to the education as well. Uh, that's why we put this together, being personalized and uh, dual language. Actually, we, there's, this program doesn't exist in the entire country. This is a piloting between dual language and personalized uh, learning. Um, and these are just pictures to go with our optimal learning spaces. Um, we've made very, a, a lot of changes throughout the um, school year so far, so to what we have currently is what's working with our students right now. So um, obviously it just goes to the fact that um, we should be responsive to the students as far as their needs. So obviously we've adapted our um, learning space for them um, physically as far as the layout and um, what they need as far as um, instruction and for their own um, individual um, goals. So these are just pictures of currently of what um, the habitat looks like. And lastly, we just wanted to put out a little pitch that we have the See It Live opportunity on March 5th, that's this week, from 9 to 2, but we welcome visitors when you're able to come and see our students in action and um, really feel free to come on in and talk to them. We have students from, you know, we have students with special needs, we have students who are high-level learners, um, and you know, we really have the gamut, and we're excited that you come in and be able to see what they're doing and how it is personal for them. Um, we truly believe in this, and we want to continue to see it grow, and we're very proud of our students and what they've been able to accomplish in that meta language, and so we want to share. So, welcome. Also, we would like to, um, oh, sorry. Just uh, 
last year we were here with our lovely students, uh, Luis and Karina, presenting this program. Yeah, I, um, that was last spring. And we were so fortunate that, that this year, um, all of our students get engaged in a, in a contest, national contest, in which uh, we're, our, our student, Luis, won a national award for uh, writing an essay. And uh, that's, that's why we brought him here, just to give you an example of exactly what is the potential being held being bilingual. And uh, I don't know if uh, Luis wants to say something about it. No? I don't want to put you in the spotlight, where you are in the spotlight right yeah. now. He's been put on the spotlight a lot, of course. <laughs> yeah. And actually, uh, him, you want it? If you had an opportunity to see the, the Freeman last week, there's an article in there, a really good article about bilingual program, um, a lot of it about uh, banting, but also uh, an article on Luis and his award and uh, being a national award. Uh, he will be traveling uh, with his parents along with uh, Mrs. Cameron uh, to Las Vegas uh, to receive the award and, and um, you know, be honored there. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great honor. You know, this is, this is, we're talking about the whole country here, and he's able to, uh, he was able to win that award. So uh, it's quite an honor for him and also for the school district as well. Um, I guess it's okay to ask a question now. Is that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, well, thank you all for being here and, and for presenting this. It is exciting. And um, I was interested in your topic about World War I weapons as well as the history of Mexico. Um, and I wanted to ask Luis, and I know you don't want to talk to us much, but what was your topic for the paper that won the award? Um. My topic was, um, well, as I was writing the essay, I really did, didn't want to get into like the whole it's important to be bilingual because you speak two languages. I wanted to get away from that and like get into like more personal stuff, like helping people, like helping people who don't know two languages and have the advantage of having those languages. Um, why not put them to use and help other people? And that's basically how my essay went. Oh, okay, great. So it was more like a personal yeah. statement as opposed to like the others were more like a research yeah. paper. Okay, thank you very much. And congratulations. Thank you. Ms. <laughs> Rannick, Thank you. So did you say this is the only one in the country right now? Uh, this, uh, there's dual language programs in middle school uh, across the country. The model that we try to put together was a hybrid between dual language and personalization. We know that uh, at this point, uh, the population of our students, uh, we have two branches. One can actually go and perform in a personalized setting. And the other, uh, that's what we're trying to do actually next year, just to have a regular dual language program and a separate personalized. So it's brand new, it's innovative. Mm -hmm. There has been, uh, there's no country alike in the country. I mean, the program alike in the country. And we're trying to, you know, build it from the ground up. And so what changes are you going to make next year? Are you going to support it up? Well, <laughs> not exactly. No, that's okay. Um, we, we are, before it was the personalized and dual, and what we're doing is integrating all of that together. And then um, the other component is also the comprehensive I want to say comprehensive literacy because that's so, but that's, I'm sorry. Yes, the comprehensive content and putting that all together. And then the changes for next year is we're hoping to include um, math. This year we had social studies, science, and language arts, mm -hmm. reading and writing workshop. And so we're hoping to incorporate all of that together so we will truly have that cross-categorical and that strong content connections that we get to see this year, but that will have that connection through the mathematic world as well. So when their projects want to involve math and want to include that, we're hoping to be able to foster that instead of having the separate. So that's the mm -hmm. only change. We'll also have about 20 more students in the academy, so we'll be close to 100 students, which you know creates a little bit of a space issue, but we still have a little bit of room to expand. Uh, not a lot, but it should be able to expand enough to be able to accommodate those extra students. So. Um, 
again, it's it's if if you have an opportunity to come and visit us, I know Mrs. Reincheck has, has been over and, and she had an opportunity to visit with the kids and see the structure of, of how it's set up. Uh, you walk in and um, it has all these different learning spaces. You saw the, some of the pictures, but they're also they can also be reconfigured when need be, uh, depending on what they're working on. And uh, you know you're not going to see the typical rows and things like that. And you can go from there's three rooms that they can go into and and uh, work on different things. So um, you have to come and see it. We invite you to come and see it. It's really an interesting interesting setup and in, in how it works. So and the three of these. People right here have spent an enormous amount of time working on this um, after hours, weekends, to make this happen. And um, it's emerging. It's something that, that you know, started. It's changed since the beginning. And it continues to change as they find new ways and, and new strategies to teach the kids. Mr. McCaffrey. How many, um, how many students are in the habitat right now? We currently have 85. Um, we just got a new student, um, and that's that's a difference as well from traditional personalized programs in the past. There's an application process, but with the bilingual servicing that we do, we accept whoever comes, and we try to get them going with everything. So our new student is transitioning right now right. in heaven. So, but um, so what is yeah. our normal day? And you know, I know schools, so I know there's no such thing as a normal day in a school. But what is it? What does a normal day look like? Um, in this program for, for the students. Do you want to see the schedule? Do you want to see the schedule? Do you want to see the schedule? Kind of like your schedule? Like what you do in a normal day? What do you do? Sorry. I know. Okay. 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 All right. So a normal day at the Habitat would be either in the morning having a group mentor meeting just to see how um, day, the day's gonna, how the day's planned out for us. Um, other than that, um, we have our own schedule. We sign up for our own sessions at our own time. And we try to see what time, when can we fit in um, independent work time to at least finish our session works. So it would be like having sessions at the end of the day, in the middle of the day, before lunch, or after a group um, meeting. So that's what we try to do, just get independent work time in there as well as getting our sessions done. And then um, at the end of the day, um, around 1.15, we have our checkout time, which we have our accountability form, which comes into our schedule. Um, after the end of the day, we have um, we have to show our evidence to our mentor what we did today. And um, um, after, if you get uh, um, three out of three or more than that, you um, actually get awarded into like a raffle ticket, which would go into the weekly raffle and goes into the monthly raffle. So, finishing your work does pay off. Finishing <laughs> your work always pays off. <laughs> <laughs> So, so what's the makeup of the 85 um, students? Because Gabby was fantastic in her span. I mean, Spanish. So, what, I mean, what is the makeup of native English speakers versus native, you know, Spanish speakers? Well, right now we have 100% native Spanish speakers. You do? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're not. We're a one-way um, dual language program. It's just one yeah. way right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, are the students involved with the same middle school curriculum except for this particular part of their day? I mean, they, they still go to math with the other kids and social studies and et cetera, all the other, and they participate in the wheel uh, coursework, right? But this is in addition to, is this correct? Um, well, they go to wheel and they, they go do. to math. Okay. Uh, with uh, the rest of the population in, at Horning. Okay. Um, social studies and science yes. are being taught at Habitat. In Habitat. Social studies and science. Okay. Because what about we, literacy? Language literacy arts. is also literacy. integrated as well. And how we work, so we chose to do science in mm -hmm. Spanish. And uh, at the same time, uh, all the literacy work goes in Spanish as well. We switch the unit and go social studies 
in English with the same question, essential question that goes, and the literacy work goes into English as well. And at the end of the units, we have uh, a, a bridging week. We try to transfer all the things that we learn, key concepts, vocabulary, to the other language. Mm -hmm. And they have an extension, something they have to apply mm -hmm. the things to the other language. Right. So if these are native Spanish speakers, um, and they're in middle school, I'm assuming they were native Spanish speakers when they're in elementary school. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. And they were learning to read, write, speak in English. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So the longer they're in the, have any of these kids been in the program since they were like in kindergarten or first grade? <coughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. How many of the 85? We, uh, the six graders. So, yes, it's all the current sixth graders right now, so we have about 47 students. Okay. And S just a side note, too, with the, our curriculum, it's based on the sessions that Mariela was talking about are all the literacy and the science and social studies sessions that they attend, which are based off of the Common Core standards, Okay. In, mm -hmm. including the biliteracy standards, too. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is just an additional opportunity for them to learn, to be involved in um, something they're interested in learning over and above the curriculum. Is it, am I describing it correctly or not? Yes, yes and no. Okay. <laughs> because yes, it's an addition to curriculum based on their interest, yes. but they also cover the curriculum through yes, their project. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay, that, that so yeah. <laughs> so as part of the Habitat program, they each do a project of some sort, a research project of something of interest Right? I mean, it could be about Mexico, but it could be about lots of other things. True. Right. Um, the, the current social studies unit that they're coming off of and speaking to, yes. we did Latin American geography. Oh, okay. So is that being an overarching theme? Mm -hmm. okay. um, we introduced some main c concepts, of course, with world geography, and then underneath that umbrella, uh -huh. they kind of said, well, I'm interested in this and how it relates to geography in this right. part of the world. Sometimes they did a comparison. Like I like World War I, so I kind of want to look in Europe and this and then what, how, yeah. So, so it I totally would, depended. It would appear to me that at this stage in their education, middle school, that they're pretty adept already in English. And for that, the that, most part, yes. For the most part, they can read and write and he, understand as well in English as they can in, in, in Spanish. Oh, that's, that's just marvelous, yeah. that's marvelous. I wish I could say that I could participate as a native English speaker, and by the time I was in sixth or seventh grade, be able to, you know, read and write as well in Spanish as I do in English. Well, that that's pretty phenomenal. And what the district, uh, uh, what we want to do with the program is to get um, AP classes for them to have credit when they get to high school. Absolutely, that would make sense. Absolutely. Oh, this is wonderful. I'm so excited. I'm going to make every effort to come over and visit yeah, Thursday. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Sounds so, so interesting. Now, we're not doing this at the other middle schools. This is unique to, to Horning. There are, there are dual language uh, yes. in every single right, that uh, I know. middle school. Right, right. But it's unique, uh, the layout that we just pre uh, presented to you. Right. So when the children participate in the Habitat program, they come to this special area that you showed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Very untraditional looking, you know, yes. welcoming, not desks, straight and row, teacher desks center front like we used to see. <laughs> this to me is quite welcoming and, and I think it enhances learning and interest in learning and gives kids an opportunity to interact with each other and as we all know, kids learn best from each other. So. I, that's a pretty incredible program. Quite frankly, all of you sitting at the table, you look like students rather than <laughs> <laughs> teachers. Thank you. That's a good thing. I see the world through different eyes today, <laughs> Mr. McCaffrey. Um, so it's just one way right now. Is there any thoughts yes. on two-way on it? Is that the plan, the Eventually, plan yes. Due to the population, though, and how mm -hmm. it's growing within the elementary level. Right. Um, currently, we just don't have them yet. We just don't but, have, okay, yeah. enough people. A couple of years back, it will, in, in a couple of years, we'll get them. Well, in a couple of years, away. it'll be English to Spanish. Now it's Spanish to English. No, what it means is the population. Uh, oh. The dual language is we want to integrate English-speaking kids mm -hmm. with Spanish-English okay, right. yeah. kids right. together English in the speakers. same right. classroom. At this okay. point, we just have Spanish speakers. 
native Spanish speakers. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah. How wonderful. Yeah, Ms. Granich, do you have a question? Uh, sorry, thank you. That's because we only have kindergarten and first grade together right now. So as mm -hmm. they come up, mm -hmm. then you'll have them. That's right. Yes. yes, thank you for clarifying that. Right. Yeah. But, but yeah, yes, we also have. Accepted. Our Bantin. first group of fifth grade dual language two-way students yes. are going into middle school this fall. Right. Mm -hmm. um, they are the first group, this fifth grade cohort, and so we currently do not have sixth and seventh graders um, in our middle school. As those fifth graders come into middle school next year, our Bethesda students will be in the third grade. So in three more years, they'll be joining middle schoolers. Our Blair students are in kindergarten right now, so they'll be coming in five years, and six years, higher kids too. So in about six years, we'll be prepared for all of our dual language programs to be able to accommodate any kind of learner. So you're banting kids in the first group, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, yeah yes. right, yeah, wow, sure. mm -hmm. wow. Thank you. No, I will fine. state, though, that um, most of the kids you see here before you today are um, proficient in English, and many of our, the diversity of our students is quite amazing. We have students that are newcomers from Colombia as recently as last week. We have students that have been in our school district since they were in kindergarten. Many, 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 most students are totally bilingual. Okay. You know, uh, this is a question I guess I'm really not sure of. Do, um, all the countries of South America speak the same Spanish that they speak in Mexico, yes or no? Well, it's the same language, different dialects. Different dialects, okay. Mm -hmm. It's the same language, so okay. it's this, yeah, it's exactly the same. Just what a, different words here and there. Sure, and change. the same with people in Spain. <laughs> Correct. Okay, yeah, I understand what you mean. Mm -hmm. I understand, okay. Did you want to say something, Mr. Crone? Okay. Actually, okay. Thank you uh, for, for coming in. And even, yeah, and even, I think even more importantly, we talk about knowledge and skills that students are learning. The skill set that you have brought to the table, this is a game changer um, for our district. The, the students that have these skills that they are learning are more than equipped to take on future challenges. And so we're, we're excited to have this here and we're excited for the team of parents um, that have supported a new model and been a part of that, the team of students that get up every morning and, and make that place work, and definitely our, team of des our design team of teachers who have done that. So we, we really are watching this. It, we think it's a game changer for how teaching and learning looks in this Absolutely. fashion. And to look at different groups that, as D. Garcia just said, uh, that we're serving, doesn't matter if you moved here today or if you've been here since kindergarten, um, the, the goal is the same. So thank okay. you to everybody for that. Do you, one more question, do you start your day earlier than the other kids, or your day is the same? No, it's, it's the same. It's the same. It's, it's the, the same. same. same okay, price. okay. Well, I too would like to echo what Mr. Cohen said. I'm so impressed. And, and uh, thank you, Mark, Mr. Wagner, for supporting these kinds of things. You've got some wonderful things going on in middle school for uh, different populations of students and uh, such great learning opportunities And as this indicates. So thank you, teachers. Thank you, students. You're, you're just excelling. Uh, Tremendously, we're very, very proud of you. Um, I wish I would have had such an opportunity when I was your age. So proud of you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I'm impressed. <laughs>